Zbyszynski arrives to address the United Nations. In the world of science and politics, few stories are as tragic as that of Igor Kurchatov, the man who helped propel the Soviet Union into the nuclear age. A genius who gave his country the power of the atom, but whose life was crushed by the very state he served. This is the story of how the Soviet Union killed the father of its atomic bomb. President Truman's dramatic announcement that Russia has created an atomic explosion sends reporters racing for Flushing Meadow, where Russia's Vashinsky arrives to address the United Nations. To understand the tragedy of Igor Kurchatov, we must first understand the man himself. Born on January 12, 1903, in the town of Sim, in the Ural Mountains, Kurchatov came from humble beginnings. His father was a surveyor, and his mother was a teacher. And from an early age, it was clear that Igor was destined for greatness. His curiosity and passion for knowledge set him apart from his peers. He attended the Simsky Parish School before moving on to higher education at the Taurida University in Crimea, where his fascination with the physical sciences blossomed. This was a time when the world was in turmoil, with the Russian Empire on the brink of collapse and revolution looming on the horizon. Kurchatov's early career was shaped by the chaotic environment of post-revolutionary Russia. Despite the upheaval, he focused on physics, eventually becoming a researcher at the Radium Institute in Leningrad. This institution would play a pivotal role in his career, as it was here that Kurchatov began to study nuclear physics long before the world knew the devastating power the atom could hold. In the late 1930s, Kurchatov was at the forefront of scientific research. His studies on nuclear fission, a process where the nucleus of an atom splits, were groundbreaking. This was an exciting time in physics, with new discoveries about the atom being made across the world. But by 1940, as tensions in Europe escalated into what would become World War II, the Soviet Union began to realize the military potential of nuclear research. The race for nuclear weapons had begun, though it remained in the shadows of the larger conflict. When Hitler invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, the USSR was caught unprepared. The urgency to develop advanced technologies, including nuclear weapons, became paramount. However, the Soviet nuclear program lagged behind the Americans, who had already initiated the top-secret Manhattan Project. In this high-stakes environment, Kurchatov was selected to lead the Soviet Atomic Bomb Project. But it wasn't just scientific ambition that fueled the Soviet effort. Stalin was growing increasingly paranoid about the advances of Western powers, especially as Soviet spies began to report on American progress. Information gathered from spies like Klaus Fuchs gave Kurchatov and his team the head start they needed. Soviet espionage played a critical role in leveling the playing field in the nuclear race. Klaus Fuchs, one of the key figures in the Manhattan Project, secretly passed classified information to the Soviets, providing them with the technical data they desperately needed. Without this espionage, the Soviet atomic program might have taken years longer. But now, with detailed blueprints from the West, Kurchatov's team could fast-track their efforts. The pressure on Kurchatov to deliver results was immense, as Stalin himself was closely watching the progress of the program. But espionage alone wasn't enough. The scientists under Kurchatov's leadership still had to push the boundaries of physics and engineering to develop their own atomic bomb. By the end of World War II, the Soviet Union had emerged not only as a victorious power, but also as a country racing to assert dominance in the post-war world. On August 29, 1949, the world changed forever. At the Semipalatinsk test site in Kazakhstan, the Soviet Union detonated its first atomic bomb, known as RDS-1, or more famously, First Lightning. This test marked the moment the Cold War truly began. The United States, which had enjoyed a monopoly on nuclear weapons since 1945, was shocked. The Soviet Union had closed the gap much faster than anyone had anticipated. The news spread across the world, igniting a new chapter in global geopolitics. 
the nuclear arms race. For Kurchatov, this was both a personal and professional triumph. He had successfully brought the Soviet Union into the nuclear age. For this, he was showered with honors, including the prestigious Stalin Prize. The state celebrated him as a national hero, and Kurchatov's image became iconic across the Soviet Union. But with this success came a darker side. Kurchatov had achieved what Stalin demanded, but the pressure of the job, the secrecy, and the looming shadow of Stalin's purges were beginning to weigh heavily on him. The Soviet Union in the 1950s was not a place where success guaranteed safety. Stalin's purges had already claimed the lives of many intellectuals and political leaders, and the world of Soviet science was no exception. Kurchatov, despite his achievements, was closely monitored by the NKVD, the Soviet secret police. While Kurchatov had avoided direct persecution, the strain of living under constant surveillance, combined with the pressure to push forward with further advancements, began to take its toll on his health. In 1950, the Soviet Union launched its next major project, the development of the hydrogen bomb. And once again, Kurchatov found himself at the forefront. The development of the hydrogen bomb was even more demanding than the atomic bomb. Kurchatov's health worsened, with frequent heart issues and exhaustion. But the Soviet government showed little concern for his well-being. For Stalin, the only thing that mattered was staying ahead of the United States. Even after Stalin's death in 1953, the pressure did not ease. The Cold War had fully taken hold, and the arms race intensified. Kurchatov continued to push forward with nuclear research, even as his physical condition deteriorated further. He began to speak out against the dangers of nuclear testing, advocating for greater caution but his warnings fell on deaf ears. On February 7, 1960, Kurchatov died of a heart attack at the age of 57. Officially, the cause of death was listed as natural causes, but many close to him knew the truth. The relentless demands of his work, combined with the stress of living under constant state control, had contributed to his early demise. For a man who had given so much to the Soviet Union, there was little fanfare surrounding his death. The Soviet government quickly moved on, shifting its focus to the next phase of the arms race. But for those who knew Kurchatov, his death was not just a loss of a brilliant scientist. It was the price of serving a regime that valued power over human life. Igor Kurchatov's legacy remains etched in the history of the Soviet Union and the world. Today, his name is immortalized in scientific institutions, monuments, and even the town of Kurchatov in Kazakhstan. He is remembered as the father of the Soviet atomic bomb, a man whose work changed the course of history. But his story is also a cautionary tale of the dangers of unchecked state power. The Soviet Union's thirst for dominance led to incredible scientific achievements, but at what cost? Kurchatov was celebrated as a hero, but he was also a victim, sacrificed on the altar of Soviet ambition. Today, as the world grapples with the legacy of the nuclear arms race, Kurchatov's life serves as a reminder of the human cost behind the pursuit of power. He may have helped build the Soviet Union's nuclear arsenal, but in the end it was that very system that broke him.